everyone, welcome back. In this video, I'm going to be telling you guys the timeline for March 2023, including the important dates, deadlines, and things you're supposed to be doing right now so that you're well prepared for this season. <laughs> season begins on the 8th of June 2022. The first most important date for you is 28th June 2022. This is because this is the time when you can start purchasing your ERAS token. Now, purchasing an ERAS token will give you access to an ERAS application. Now, this ERAS application contains all your important details, including your name, personal details, education qualifications, your CV, your LORs, your MSPE transcript, photographs, everything. So beginning from June, you can purchase your ERAS token anytime. Like last time, ERAS opened in June as well, but I was not quite sure if I would be applying or not. So I bought my ERAS token only in the last week of July because that's when I thought, let me apply for the match. So you don't have to purchase it on the 28th of June. It just begins on this date. In order to get your ERAS token, you should first go to the ECFMG website. Then click on online services. Once you click that, choose the option that says for physicians. Under that, you have to click on Oasis. Once you're at Oasis, you're supposed to log in using your ECFMG or USMLV ID and your password. Once you do that, select ERAS support services. That will take you to a page that looks something like this and there you can request your ERAS token. Once you click this, it will ask you for your details and it will ask you to pay the fees for it. And once you're done with that, you will have access to your ERAS application. So once you've purchased it, you can access your ERAS application anytime and you have a lot of time to fill this up. So if you're very sure of applying this year, I'd recommend getting your ERAS token as soon as possible so that you can start filling it up so that you don't have to do a lot of things together later. You have time till September 28th to fill it up because on September 28th, programs will get access to all the details that you've put on your ERAS application. So it's highly recommended that you certify and submit a little before the 28th of September so that when the applications are open to programs, they'll be able to download yours on the first day itself. So let's say you start filling it in June and you've completed filling everything. You still can't submit it right now because you will be able to start submitting your application only from the 7th of September. You can choose to submit your application anytime between 7th September to 28th September. Also, there is no advantage of submitting your application very early so it's recommended to like submit it just two or three days before the 28th of September because once you submit it you cannot make any changes to your application so it's highly recommended that use your time in September as well to sort of go over your application to like proofread everything and make sure everything is in order before you hit submit because once you certify and submit you cannot make any changes to your CV so keep that one thing in mind okay so during this period of time you supposed to be filling in all your details, filling in your CV, getting your MSPE, writing your personal statement, applying for ECFMG certification, requesting for LORs, uploading an ERAS headshot, assign your USMLE scores, requesting your school to upload your MSPE, requesting your school to upload your transcript, and then shortlisting the programs that you want to apply to, and ultimately assigning all these documents to all the programs and hitting submit. So these are the things that you're supposed to do between this period of time. And like I said, keep everything ready by mid-September so that you have like five buffer days to just like go, go over everything. And then you can submit it maybe a few days before 28th September. So last year, I had done it around that time. So I just wanted to like, you know, be a little safe because there may be some processing time. So you don't want to be delayed because you're going to make sure that everything is done well before 28th because on 28th, when they download, all the applications you want yours to be there so keep that in mind and plan everything accordingly i made like a super detailed checklist with even every task and subtask because i did not want to miss anything out so i'll try sharing that with you guys in the coming days on my instagram so make sure you follow me so, so that you can stay updated with that all other years these were the only processes that you were supposed to follow in order to apply for residency but just last year they introduced used a new thing known as supplemental eras application so basically your supplemental application consists of three parts you have a geographic preference impactful experiences and preference signaling 
So here what you're supposed to be doing is you can like give a preference to program saying that there are certain job difficult areas that you'd like to work in. Like for example, they'd ask you like would you prefer working in a rural area or an urban area? And they may also ask you if there are certain places in the United States that you'd rather work in. You know like each part of the application is not really compulsory for you to fill but you can sort of fill it if you want to. So for me like for geographic preferences, I didn't really give any preference because I was pretty flexible and then the next thing that they ask for is the five most meaningful experiences so now on your ERAS application you may be adding your work experience volunteer experience research experience so they, there may be a lot of things right so, so the goal of having this on the supplemental application is so that programs can maybe quickly glimpse through it and see which are the five most important ones to you so now the third part is preference signaling In preference signaling basically it's like each of us apply to a lot of programs right so now let's say you've applied to 100 programs you can like signal your top five programs telling them that those are the programs that you're really interested in i'm not quite sure if the data is published from last year about signaling but if it is then that's something that you can go over to see which programs took signaling seriously and which ones did not and since like preference signaling didn't really work too well for me i'm not sure i can give proper advice on this maybe you can try asking your seniors or someone who has already matched to see what strategy they used for signaling if it really worked for them. So that's about it for the supplemental application. And also AAMC is holding like this super important webinar on the 19th of May 2022. So I'll leave the link in the description so that you can go check that out because they will like explain the whole thing about supplemental applications and they may also mention like some strategies for signaling. So, so you can like participate in that because that's going to give you a lot of information. The supplemental ERAS opens only on the 1st of August. So starting 1st of August, you can start filling in your supplemental ERAS application. And that's when you fill in these three parts of it and then you submit it. You can submit it anytime from then till 16th September. Note that after 16th September, you cannot submit your supplemental application. So that's another important date to keep in mind. Having gone over all the dates and deadlines, I want to tell you all what you should be doing right now so that you're well prepared for this season. Number one, one, plan your USMLE exams. Those are like super important because your application may be considered incomplete if you do not have your step scores. And especially now since step one has gone pass fail, it's highly recommended to have your step two CK score before submitting your ERAS application on the 28th of September because you want to give this like your best shot, right? And especially for IMGs, it's better to like be extra prepared and just submit a full application so if you've not completed your step exams please plan it in such a way that all your reports everything is in place by august so that you can apply for easy fmg certification that brings me to the second thing that you should be doing so for easy fmg certification there are four major things that you need you need your step one score step two score clinical pathway and also credential verification so if you've already graduated then please upload your diploma on easy fmg and get your credentials verified because like I remember I had completed step 1 step 2 OED everything was done but I got my diploma only in the end of August so credential verification took quite some time and it happened just before ERAS opened to programs that is it happened like on 27th and ERAS opened on 29th last year although easy FMG certification is required only at the time you submit your rank order list but if you're a non-US IMG you don't want to take any risks because there are also like some programs that filter applicants out based on easy fmg status so you don't want to risk anything so easy fmg certification is also one more important thing that you want to make sure you have before september 28th so plan your step one step two oet everything according to this and get your credentials verified if you have your diploma with you and are choosing to apply for the match this year if you want more details on easy fmg certification and like the, and the stepwise process for it make sure you check like this video out i'll link it over here you can take a look at that for like a stepwise breakdown of the whole thing and the third thing you're supposed to be doing is request for an mspe from your university so mspe is basically like medical school performance evaluation it's also known as the dean's letter it's basically like a breakdown of your performance in medical school in different subjects and your performance as compared to your peer 
yours and it has like many other things and ultimately your dean is supposed to sign it al along with your university seal i'll add like a sample to the description so that you guys get a fair idea of what it is so most schools don't really have a format or anything so here's what i did so like i always request my doctors and my professors for a feedback so so i had like proof of all of those things and then and i submitted all of that to my coordinator and i also gave them the format that we're supposed to follow so if you're not quite sure where to begin you can like start this way for your nsp uh, the next thing that you can start doing right now is to work on your personal statement your personal statement will honestly take a lot of time like you may write something once and then you reread it and then you may not like certain things and then you will keep changing it it's going to happen uh so start writing right now you don't really have to make like a final copy right away all you can do right now is maybe just start reading some samples so that you get a fair idea of what you're supposed to do how you're supposed to approach it and all of those things and also i want to help you guys review your personal statement so i'll let you guys know on instagram because right now i'm a little held up with some residency paperwork so once all of that is sorted i think i may have some free time to like review your personal statement the next most important thing is lors so on eras you have to request for your letters of recommendation so the way this works is you have to go to the lor section you have to like enter the email id of the doctor you rotated with and then they'll be given a notification once they get a notification they will be able to upload a letter for you and then that will come to your eras so if you've completed your rotations and you buy your eras token just request for lors right away so that you're giving your doctor sufficient time to go over everything and and write a good letter for you because for me i remember i had requested for all the lors on the same day that i purchased my eras token like last year i think i purchased it around 26th july and i requested for all my lors on the same day and most of my lors i think 3 out of 4 lors came within just one week's time so then there was one less thing to worry about and having said that if you still don't have usce and lors i highly encourage you to try to get at least some us see so that you have enough letters of recommendation for this application season i have like a whole video on usce so make sure you check that out i will link it somewhere over here so that you can go and plan your usce accordingly next comes your photograph like your eras headshot does not have to be taken right away you can take it any time but there are certain specifications that are required for your eras photograph i came across like this one blog which had mentioned those things so i'm going to link that in the description as well so that you can check it out and take your eras photograph accordingly i uploaded mine sometime in august last year so it was not like much of a hassle also request your university for like documents like your transcript mspe all of that beforehand so that you give them enough time to maybe like process everything and hand everything over to you so like my msp and transcript was uploaded by my dean's office of my university so you can like request your universities and your med schools to do that as well after you've purchased your token so like last year the way i did this was like i told you guys right i purchased my eras token around july 26 so by the end of august i wanted to finish filling out my eras application personal statement everything i wanted to like fill everything have all my documents keep everything ready so that in september i had given my cv for review like i'd given it to a couple of residents before i got their opinion and i also gave it to chicago clerkship so basically like i had done a rotation with them right so they'd offered like free editing services so so i thought why not make use of that and i gave it to them for like going over my personal statement and my cv and suggesting changes and stuff for it so i did that and by mid september everything was set i also finished like supplemental application by then so that the last few days were just for me to you know uh, go through everything one last time do a final proofread like a final check before hitting certify and submit also around august i was also looking at the list of programs on residency explorer to see which ones i liked and which ones i did and which ones i wanted to apply to which ones were the compatible programs so if you want i'll make like a separate video on how i chose programs because i genuinely chose only those programs where i saw myself practicing at and i felt were good for me so i did not apply to a lot of programs so let me know in the comments if you want me to make a video on that so let me go over the timeline one last time 
So on 28th June, you can start purchasing the ERAS token. Once you've purchased it, you can start filling out your ERAS application and requesting for all the documents. So August 1st, you can start filling in your supplemental application and you can submit it any time between 1st August to 16th September. And you can submit your main ERAS application any time between 7th September to 28th September. So in future videos, we're going to be speaking more about interview preparation, personal statements and, and all other important stuff about the math. So make sure you subscribe and if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments and I'll try to get back to them as soon as I can. So thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.